Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nerenstein, and this is vehicle versions. I have been toying with and teasing you guys with a car I was getting for the last so long you have probably thought I was totally full of shit. But I'm not even gonna clickbait. I'm not even gonna put this in the end of the video. I bought a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. We are here at Quail. I'm seeing this for the first time. I've literally only spent about two minutes around the car. I went inside, I'll take you on a tour through it. And I'm honestly not sure of the color, but after seeing this color, and after, by the way, I am not selling the Huracan. I'm gonna put 50,000, 100,000 miles on that Huracan. Seeing this color as a slightly different satin version of Verde Mantis, a little darker, of course, seems like it could be the right thing to do. Let's take a tour. One of the coolest parts about the Aventador SVJ is that this might very well be the last naturally aspirated V12 Lamborghini ever made. What do I mean by that? Well, they're not going to likely go forced induction on the V12, but they might add a hybrid powertrain. Another cool thing is, obviously, the SV, very fast around the track, but it felt a little bit heavy. Single clutch gearbox, it was a little jerky. They added the ALA aerodynamic system from the Performante, fine-tuned it a little bit, so we've got actually active aerodynamic flaps in the front, we've got some active aerodynamic elements in the rear, one of the largest wings I've ever seen in my life, and a pretty cool revamped exterior and interior. Let's go around back, you gotta check out the tailpipes on this thing. If you've seen any pictures on Instagrams or any of the launch footage or even just this video, the rear end of the SVJ is the most extreme. It takes elements from almost the Veneno in a sense, also the Aventador SV, and then the Performante center exit exhaust. We've got a massive, enormous carbon fiber rear diffuser, huge wing, and well, it produces a heck of a lot more downforce than the SV does. But what I was most interested in is how is the little fine-tuned elements on the side and the vents that you couldn't really tell with the camo what they would look like? Well, I'm pretty impressed with how it looked. Let's go check out what the inside's like. Well, the interior of the SVJ is obviously quite similar to the SV, but a couple of things I noticed that are super cool. One, check out the roof. This actually has leather that's weaved like carbon fiber. When I looked up, I was like, well, that's gonna be kind of intense on your head if it bumps into this carbon fiber, but it's actually carbon fiber weaved leather. That's unbelievable. The seats are very, very intense, much like the bucket seats in the Performante. But in general, I mean, we've got a larger screen like in the Aventador S. We've got a large LED display here, but it is pretty much the same as an Aventador SV. Is that a problem? No, but I do kind of wish it had a double clutch gearbox. And uh, I just found out actually that they're making 900 coupes. Uh, I could be wrong, but it says one of 900 here. So I was told 900 coupes, 900 roadsters. They, they aren't announcing the roadsters, but if you're making 900 coupes, they're not gonna make three roadsters. Now, if I am wrong and there's 450 coupes and 450 roadsters, I'll be a little more happy. But originally, it was supposed to be somewhere around 300. Now, they've just come out with a car called the SVJ63. Now, the SVJ63 is a final edition. You don't really get to choose the color, I don't believe, and they're only making 63 of those. So that is the car I'm gunning for. So Lamborghini, please, please, if you want an SVJ63 driven all around the world to different racetracks, I'm the guy. I want to have an agile, nimble, handling-oriented car, a design which is completely different, but unmistakably a Bugatti. So it's been a while, man, since Absolutely. Texas, but thank you again for driving your freaking Ford GT and all of your awesome cars. 
Now, uh, last time I saw this, I believe was in Geneva. Right. You told me about the engine. Yeah. I hadn't seen the engine. What's typical when you make claims like the fastest car and the biggest engine is that nobody believes it, but I knew an engine was coming. Right. And I just announced on my channel that uh, I, I got another car that's a very special naturally aspirated car. Okay. But as you know, right. naturally aspirated cars have a limit. Sure. And um, what? Limit does this have? How much power does this make? A lot more than 1600 horsepower. Oh my, a lot more. A lot more. I mean, look at the size, guys, of these turbos. That is unbelievable. And also, I mean, for the people who didn't believe in the engine, I'd say, uh, I'd say it's time to believe. But what you tell me? Such a good-looking car. Obviously, silly powerful. Do you have top speed goals or zero to sixty goals or what? What are we working on? The goal on? for the F5 has always been to break 300 miles per hour. Oh my God! And we've tested the Venom F5 engine, 7.6 liter, all new Hennessy aluminum twin turbo V8 engine powered by Pinto to well over 1600 horsepower. So our goal, simply stated, is to break 300 miles per hour. So we're going to do that potentially as soon as. 2019. Oh my gosh. Can I be there for that? Yeah, absolutely. That <laughs> we'll put you in the passenger seat. Oh my, could you? I'm you so down. down. Take I'm, on that? I'm taking you up All on right. that. Okay. I'm serious. That has to happen. Yeah. Okay. What did the What did the Venom do in one direction? I know you have to do both. Right. We ran, we ran at NASA, we ran 270 miles an hour and a little over two miles. So wow. if we take the F5 out to run it, we'll have a longer stretch around. Yeah, you need five, longer. Five miles. Wow. Uh, well, dude, thanks again. Thanks, Parker. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, from the king of naturally aspirated track cars to the king of literally, this is going to be the fastest car in the world, top speed and probably zero to 200 miles an hour, zero to 150. Maybe anything other than zero to 60 might be hard. It's rear wheel drive, but we don't care about. You don't care. To 60. I don't care about zero to 60. 60 to 130. 60 to 260. We gotta end it like that.